Uh, I'm drinking a black sheep ale now, and uh, it is brewed in a uh, born and bred in Yorkshire. Hello, and welcome to the Indie Bandits podcast, episode zero. I'm Joe, and in preparation for our podcast launching properly next year, I sat down with my childhood friends and fellow indie enthusiasts, Archie and Jimmy, over a few beers. We chatted about the indie games we're currently playing, and the games from Nintendo's Indie World presentation and Sony's state of play that piqued our interest. We hope you enjoy it! Well, the game I'm playing at the minute, it's not current, I guess, because, well, it's a couple years old at this point, but I'm playing Divinity Original Sin, which was kind of based on James's recommendation to try and play the second one. <laughs> oh my god, we need to get on that, by the way. <laughs> I will. I will. But in terms of, like, old school, like, charming kind of art style, and, like, really, like, superb, like, mechanics in terms of, like, fighting, this game is just absolutely sublime. <laughs> And it took me a long time to get into it. So it's an RPG, it's like a fantasy RPG. And, you know, in typical, you have your little squad. It's kind of like similar to like Battle's Gate, similar to Neverwinter Nights. And you go on your oh, wee shit, quest Never and Neverwinter Nights, I remember that. Yeah, they've just re released that actually on PS4. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, God, totally forgot about that. Um, so it's a similar type of game to that. So you have all your different uh, classes and you kind of like delegate kind of special skills to each, uh, each per- person in your party. And whenever you get into a fight, it is like a little like mini game of chess, and everything you like, everything requires a little bit of thought in order to get past it. Even on the easiest mode, you can't just go in and like hack things to bits. You've got to use like the environment to your advantage, and you've got to use each player to their best advantage. So you can do things like, for sake of example, like uh, if there's some oil on the ground, like you shoot a fire arrow at the oil, the oil will obviously set on fire, and that will cause additional damage. Or you can cast a spell in order to create rain and when it's raining you're if you fire like an electric shock or something electric arrow an electric spell or something those effects will be then like increased and last for longer the game is just for the fact I, as far as i know it was mainly a kickstarter thing and given the i'm guessing the minuscule budget was made on it is by far one of the best rpgs i've played in like the last god knows how many years at this point 10 years maybe is that it the is, same studio that did divine divinity yes because that was more way, yes. Oh, it's like the threads of those guys that's left. Yeah, that like, was like, I mean, I played Divine Divinity. I didn't play the one which you've played, but I have played the second one. Mm-hmm. And my favorite thing from those games, I mean, apart from the fact that art style is fantastic, as you said, the the gameplay itself is really strategic, and you've got to think mm-hmm. about. It. For me, it was the the story and the dialogue is just so good. Mm-hmm. It's really entertaining. It does not take itself seriously. It's like darkly comedic. And it's just a really fantastic setting and fantastic voice acting and, and dialogue that they've created for this game. It's it's so entertaining to play beyond the gameplay, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just oozes with charm. You can tell, like, it's just the people who've wanted to make this have just wanted to make this. And yeah. it just it shows in every part of their, like, presentation right down to the, the way it looks, the way it plays, the way it handles. It's definitely not a game you can pick up and understand straight away. I have to admit, I tried to play this game. Oh my god, I, this was my, my last chance I was giving it because I was doing terribly at it. I didn't understand it. Like, there's no waypoint markers in this game except for, like, maybe incredibly crucial things, but it's not going to breadcrumb trail you to where you need to go. Mm-hmm. Like, And the mission objectives are, aren't written in a traditional way, they're written in a very, very old school way where it kind of describes what you need to do. But it's vague enough for you to use your like you to interpret it what you need what you like to interpret it what and to interpret it. <laughs> I don't think to say this word. This is a cracking little segment this art show. We can remix to this. Understand what you need to do. <laughs> um so it's great. It's just like it's just classic like RPG. Everyone, if you're an RPG, should absolutely like check it out if you haven't done so already. Imagine if you're on RPGs, you probably have already played it. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you haven't, what are you doing? But regardless, yeah. if you haven't, go check it out. Do you remember? Do you remember the days? Uh, the uh, what was one we played, Joe, back when? Guild Wars. Guild Wars. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We picked up because you didn't need a subscription. Yeah, to it was a free play. To play. Right? Co-op, what multiplayer? This. You started to buy the game though, right? It wasn't. You did, like... but I mean, you know, you got to do that with any game, don't you? But. Like honestly, 
saying this to uh, Archie and Dom and we were last out as well, we should 100% uh, get this game. This should be uh, this should be on the on the list of Just things on the to, list. to do a bit of co-op play with. It's uh, it's tons of fun. For me, for the uh, for current indie game, we've had a lot of fun playing Overcooked 2. Oh, yes. Oh, the Team 70 That's, game. I, I do feel that indie games thrive in the couch co-op or, you know, just general co-op setting. I think, you know, often the games are quite small and, and, and you know, understandably so, smaller budgets, smaller games, but they often thrive, I think, when you can play with your mates, when you're all around one house or when you're playing online and Overcooked 2 is got to be one of the best couch co-op games that's ever come out it is absolutely tons of fun so did yeah, you play the first one at all yeah we did well yeah that was uh the the, the when we had uh when we were all around the uh, doms that night <laughs> ah gotcha. that was that was the first yeah, yeah. one but, i was yeah. gonna say because I've, I've got because i've got overcooked the, the original one but i i haven't picked up overcooked 2 because right. i'm a bit of a, a stickler because i want to finish overcooked one right yeah but because me and the lass are playing it and We've we've we're stuck on the end boss, and and I don't want to and I don't want to be a bit of a knob and bring in a ringer to finish it because we got all the way to that end boss, but and well the good thing is that the, the co-op in that game is is so well done that no one can carry the team. Yeah. In that game, everyone has to be putting in the same amount of effort. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm putting in more effort than anyone else in this game, but I just, <laughs> and I've not, you know, and it's, it's not that I could totally do it on my own if there was two of me or anything like that. I'm just, I don't want to, I don't want to get someone else in who plays games more often than she does and then finish the game and be like, yeah, I finished it. Sorry, you didn't cut the mustard. So I, I can't, I can't bring myself to buy the second one until I feel we've uh, bookended that one because I've got the special edition and all the, uh, and all the add-ons, so I want to move on to the special editions and like the Christmas-themed stuff before before I can play Overcooked Two. Mm. And it's kind of it's kind of stopped me because it, it, the second one looks great and it looked like they added a load of stuff and online play. It, it, it is tons of fun, yeah. I just can't bring myself to do it until I've I've, I've finished the first one. Yeah, that's fair enough. What, what's your What's yours anyway? Been playing a lot of uh, Sniper Elite with Archie, which is the greatest. Sort of, I don't want to say good-looking indie games, but I mean one that like has visuals that you think could be in a triple A game. You know that you know indies tend to steer towards, you know, like the pixel art, the retro style, or yeah. a kind of like lower fidelity graphical style, but with with better aesthetics. There's a lot of this like, you know, good art direction, whereas Sniper Elite looks just like any old shooter. And that, that's not a that's not a negative thing. It looks, it looks good. There's these great landscapes you can look over. But if I didn't say it was made by a smallish team in an indie studio, you'd be like, oh yeah, that, this could be any old shooter. I, I, I wouldn't play it competitively. But as a co-op game, it is fantastic. Think if somehow you can make Metal Gear multiplayer and good, <laughs> then uh, then you've got it sneaking sneaking around, blowing Nazis' brains up. It's it's kind of exactly what you want out of a shooter without feeling guilty for it being a shooter. If you get me, you know. Yeah. I actually thought that that wasn't an indie game, to be honest. When I saw the trailers ages ago, it looks, as you say, it looks quite a polished. And that's not having a go at indie games, but as you've said, they often do, I'm assuming from budget and time and staff resource constraints, the, the graphics are not usually sort of AAA standard graphics, and these ones look, these ones look pretty good. So, um, yeah. No, I mean it's a fant- it's a fantastic looking game, and I mean, the the one we're playing is it four we're up to, Archie? Well, up to it's the first one I've ever played of it. Oh yeah, yeah, Sniper Elite four. <laughs> but uh, no, I'd re- I'd recommend uh, Sniper Elite. I mean, we're we're what four times through the campaign now, Archie? Yeah, and it yeah, it's like you say, it really is like just the greatest fun when you're playing with somebody else. Like if you don't like, you know. I guess stealth, stealth action. Would you describe it as that? But um, mm. in terms of yeah, how it looks as well, like it really is filling that that kind of. I know you you would take for a triple A game if you didn't know if you didn't know any better. I guess mm-hmm. like it, it it's definitely like double A. You know if that's even a, like a term. Yeah. Yeah. We really hope you're enjoying our pilot podcast so far. 
After a few beers, Archie, Jimmy and I all needed a quick bathroom break, but after that we sat straight back down and moved on to talking about Nintendo's Indie World presentation, Sony's state of play, and some of the games from those presentations that we were really looking forward to. Let's get back into it. I saw Jimmy, you put down Super Mash, the, uh, yeah, the that, game that makes games. Yeah, that's the one where I think it said that you pick two different genres and then it creates a a game or a level out of those two yeah, things yeah. put together. So there's an obviously huge combination of types of games, and that, that that sounds like a lot of fun, especially for if the you know co-op is involved in that. That would be great. I think uh, that's a it sounds like a good uh, say couch co-op type game if if it has that functionality, obviously. Um, but I think that would be a game that has a lot of replayability as well. It's quite unique. I don't think I've known any other game that's tried to do that, like a a mashup type thing. It's quite. Cool. I mean, it's literally the mantra of uh, indie development. I feel sometimes it's like this is this this we like this genre and we like this genre, but why has no one ever put them together? Yeah. Because it sounds stupid on paper, but we've made a game that works. And uh, yeah, I just I just worry it'll be a. Uh, It'll be sadly limited, mm. you know, because on the on the pitch it sounds like it, you can make infinite possibilities of games, which reminds me of when they first announced Spore, and it sounded like you can go from a single-celled organism oh, into uh, yeah. playing Civilization, and in fact, what you have is like four watered-down versions of good games. That that that's the that is the worry, yeah. That basically every single mashup is just going to be a really crap version, like a really crap game, and it's just like it's n- it's not one thing nor the other, and it's. Yeah, it's watered down and it's just a bit crap. I mean, you know, I'm not going to sit and slate it now whilst it's uh, no. just in release because I've been mean, good on them and it looks if it's if it's as if it's as they say it is and they they haven't just oversold it, it might be like the greatest game of all time. Well, that that was the one that stood out to me as well as um, I think I saw Streets of Rage Four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that that takes me back to arcades in the Metro Center and stuff. So. Yeah, I I played that a lot uh, way back when. In, in in arcades, I never owned the game myself, but it was always in arcades, and uh, that looks like... Actually, the the art style of it looked very nice. It looked really polished and clean. Um, yeah, I looked at it. I wouldn't have said it was Streets of Rage. I would have said it was, like, it's a game yeah. inspired by Streets of Rage. I'm like, but no, when I first... When I saw when I saw the images from it, I'm like, oh, yeah, kind of typical 90s street fighting game but now instead yeah, yeah. of pixel art we've got this uh kind of clean clean artwork that look cool and once that streets of rage 4 I'm like what no, it's... yeah no so the, they were the two that stood out to me any any took your attention archie well i was in agreement with james actually i thought that was it called super mash was that it yeah, super yeah, yeah. Mash, i yeah. thought boy howdy does this game look fun but then, <laughs> but then... you have never thought boy howdy in your life <laughs> But then, when a, when a trailer with a skateboarding bird comes up, I was like, like, what the... I was like, holy moly, this is something I want to play. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, that game's just, like, Super Mash looks great, because I, th- I think you guys hit the nail on the head that it, it is just, like, this super creative idea of, like, combining a bunch of, like, different elements together. It's going to really, like, like people will, like, obviously be experimenting with that, have loads of, like, creative ideas, see what, what they can come up with, and then there's a silly little game about a skateboarding bird, <laughs> which is such an <laughs> unusual premise that I, you know, you can't, I want to check that out. I've been watching that for a while. And it looked uh, it looked it looked fun. It looked like a it looks like a rehash of the early Tony Hawk games mm-hmm. that were uh, that were a lot of fun. Except you know instead of I don't know ga- unlocking characters who were like in Jackass or something, you unlock yeah. ties for birds and stuff, which I think is like disgustingly adorable. That you might actually yeah. get weirdly into it, especially <laughs> if the birds have di- if the birds have different abilities, you know, or if they have different stats and they skate in different ways, you'd be like, oh, I've got this sparrow or whatever, and it's a, uh, I don't know, I I've, I could buy into it even if it's sort of a really mm-hmm. dumb premise. Like the one that really did, like I kept thinking, well, I didn't think about it that much, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the one I th- like when it came up eventually, because um, even though it's not an indie game as such, was it's not an indie game at all, actually, it was uh, Dreams. And Dreams is, from what I know, just a, a toolbox in kind of a game engine you can run on your PlayStation. And I thought what was interesting about that is the fact that even though it's not an indie game 
per se, it's going to encourage a lot of young people to try and like, experiment making their own things. Like, it's not going to be the cost of having to get all this software, like, even those things like Unreal Engine and Uni Engine are easy enough for somebody to get a hold of. The tools outside of that that actually are required to start making games are considerably more expensive. So, for, like, a set of tools that can, you know, like, young people or people of God knows whatever age can just, like, pick up this game and start making their own little mini projects at home and everyone can play them. That, to me, was like, oh, that would be really good because that's going to, like, hopefully, like, give the opportunity for like loads of like loads of different like crazy ideas and like you know you get i mean like when scared bird exists i don't know where you go from that but like <laughs> but you, you understand what i mean like dreams is essentially just giving people like a game engine that they can just run on their consoles at home and they can sort of learn about like how things are put together what works artistically what doesn't what works in terms of gameplay building things so they they like run frame rate and all these like different technical things that people have to consider when they're actually making games like they'll get to like experience it in kind of like more of a, a smaller entity at home just making whatever the heck they want and to me that sounds like just super interesting that well, anybody who you know has a PlayStation and this game could just start like making stuff. Well, like those who uh, who write for the the Pico Eight, you know the uh, mm-hmm. the it's a it's a virtual platform. It's uh, it's uh, the idea is it's an eight bit console that doesn't exist. So oh, really? it's a it's a set of it's a set of rules or constraints. So it has its own its own like code and uh, constraints to make games and the original the original uh, idea for Celeste was made from a game jam on this where they made a mini version of the game and it turned out to play all right so they they went back to that idea and I feel dreams could be like that people getting experience making games developing games developing ideas trying out ideas that they yeah, exactly. uh, you know maybe don't have the the, the skill set to to make in mm-hmm. in a a fully fledged game engine, yeah. But from the from the way they tout it, the uh, the whole the it can make anything they say. But they also say that about Super Mash, so who knows? Yeah, it's worth checking out. Actually, I've looked at some of the things that have been made from it, um, and so I mean, there will be this. There will be some level of limitation to it. I imagine you know when you play something that, like if you look back in the PS3 era when something was made in like Unreal Engine, you just you could kind of. Hell, it was made in Unreal Engine. Not that limited to the type of game that was being made, but it was also like, oh, this is an Unreal game. Like, still a good it game. It has a certain look and feel. Yeah, there's a certain look and feel about it. And um, I imagine it'll be the same with this. But it's just like, like so what kind of thing? Like, if people are just like making things, exercising their own creativity, and just like, like they can have an idea, oh, I want to make this, and like make my own little universe, or my own little platform game, or racing game, and do whatever I want with it, I think that's great. Because not a lot of games do that. Mm-hmm. I can barely think of any. So yeah, just I know it's not indie, but yeah, it's just great. <laughs> um, what I thought was interesting as well about um, the Nintendo thing, not only because this like fulfills some nostalgia for me, is that I like how Oddworld are still supporting like their old titles on new platforms. But that Stranger's Wrath is like coming to Switch, and I, they've released that on like everything <laughs> that I, it was on my like, PS3, it was on Xbox, Vita. I think I'm pretty sure it's maybe even on like uh, Apple products as well. And I just like to see that. Was it successful? Um, moderately successful. I don't think it wasn't huge or anything. When it came on the Xbox, I don't think it did too well. Um, no. But they, it must be doing well enough for them to just like constantly keep porting it to new platforms. Like it might, it might be being held up by a uh, fresh and tasty as well. That was a uh... oh new and tasty, new and tasty, fresh and, <laughs> fresh and tasty. <laughs> It's like a subway tagline, isn't it? <laughs> it might be. Yeah, was that? Oh, that might, I might be playing the subway game. <laughs> Fresh and tasty. No, I just like it. It just shows that they're, like, they're committed to like you know not only like, like their legacy, but they they are just going all in on their their Oddworld quintology that they've been talking about since like the mid nineties. Yeah, you saw the uh, the recent Ars Technica video. Oh, it's great. The yeah, interview. Yeah. yeah, talking about uh, yeah they've got they've got big plans for this franchise mm. that's been going. What two decades now? Yeah, it's like Oddworld ninety seven. Abe's obviously came out, so yeah, you think I'm talking twelve years, uh, twelve years, uh, twenty two years at this point. No, Oddworld gets my vote. Um, always worth checking out. And Soulstorm is coming out next year apparently, so I can't wait for that. That right, looks decent. Looks very good. Anything to add, Jim? No. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I've got to add is this beer was actually very good. The Bishop's Finger, um, 
5.4% alcohol volume, but I'm definitely going to give it at least an 8.5 out of 10. Thanks for listening to episode zero of the Indie Bandits podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, we'll be back in the new year with even more. Feel free to subscribe to the podcast or check out IndieBandits.com for indie game news, reviews and previews. If you'd like to follow us on social media, you can find us on Twitter at Indie Bandits or like Indie Bandits on Facebook. We'll be back in January with episode one of the Indie Bandits podcast where we'll be looking at the nominees for Best Independent Game at the Game Awards and we hope to see you then.